OmniFocus for the iPad brings a whole new level of organization with a great look and interface. This allows you to properly organize and manage your tasks in your life in an easy to navigate manner. Let's start with the menu sidebar. This includes two large buttons, one for quickly creating a quick entry, your inbox, projects, contacts, map, forecast, flagged, and review. To create a quick entry, click the large button on the top left with the pencil and the pad. Quick entry tasks are located in the inbox and are self-explanatory but involve much more. OmniFocus allows you to create a quick task that will drop right into the inbox for later organization or just for quick use. You can assign in a title such as testing, assign it a context, a project, flag it, move it into a specific project or folder, assign it dates such as a start or due date, and also put it for repeat for bills, notes, and you can also attach a picture or you can also attach an audio clip. After you're done, press save. This will show up in your inbox. So go to your menu, click your inbox, and you'll see on the bottom there is my new task entry of testing. As you can see on the bottom, my new quick entry of testing has been added. This is the inbox where you can find most of your quick entry items. These are items that aren't usually in projects or have context. These are something that you can add later into your projects and are just for a quick view. To get to projects, go to the main menu, go to projects, and here you'll see all your folders and projects listed. Projects are folders that contain individual tasks and ideas and are what I call the first line of organization within OmniFocus. Projects can contain folders that are often known as nesting. I like to think of projects as the genre of a book. Projects are meant to be the macro identity and acts like a folder where you can store additional folders and individual ideas. This is your basic level of organization. For everything around the house or at work, projects should reflect large genres or actual projects you should be working on. Projects goes further into organization management by allowing you to add tasks into the respective project folder that may also have different contexts, or they may be other tasks within the same project. This allows you to have the macro view of what is going on within that one project. When adding a new project, press the plus sign at the top and you can create a new project, folder, or quick entry. Once you create a new project, you can set it to sequential, meaning that all the actions must be completed in order, parallel, meaning all actions can be completed at any time, and a single action list consists of unrelated single items. From here you can put your project on active, hold, completed, or drop it. Then you can assign the context, flag it, or move it into a folder. You can add the start and due times as well, as making it repeat or for things such as bills where you can have it repeat every month or every day. You can attach notes, audios, or pictures from your iPad, Mac, or iPhone to the projects as well. You can easily navigate through projects on the main screen, but you can also navigate via the sidebar. For those of you who are avid nesters, press the house button to return to the main menu just in case you may get lost. When navigating projects, you can easily do things such as expand, collapse, or hold down, press expand all, or hold down and collapse all. This makes it really easy to navigate around OmniFocus, and you can easily expand or collapse any folder or project you wish. To edit a certain project or a folder, go and press the actual folder or the project, add any info, dates, notes, or attachments, or you can actually change the title itself, or like I'm going to do right now, delete it altogether. If you want to actually have a nice view of everything, go ahead and click the eyeball and here you have a bunch of actions you can take. The next action available, the only ones that are available, remaining, or all, such as you see here. And as you can see oh, down here, we have some that are already completed. But I don't want to see those, so I'm going to do available. To get to context, go to your menu, press context, and your available context should show up. You can change the list of which you can view, including next action, 
available remaining or all of them, which include the ones they're not even using. I don't like to see the ones I'm not using, just for organization's sake, so I choose available. Contexts are what I call the second line of organization with an OmniFocus. They provide a more specific look into tasks, and I like to think of them as a the title of a book. For example, Harry Potter is considered the context, whereas the project slash category is the fiction. Contexts are also useful when assigning them to a location such as home, work, phone, or blog. This allows you to view tasks via contexts that are appropriate for the occasion or location. Contexts can be used in many ways depending on your level of style of organization. Contexts can be assigned under another context for additional organization. Making a context more specific can be advantageous if you have a lot of tasks under one project or another context. For example, under the context internet, you may want to put down blog so you know which tasks are for your blog and which ones are for another internet activity such as email. Using context can help you be more organized by allowing you to see certain contexts and not other ones that you don't need to see right now. For example, if I want to go to my email, I don't want to have to see what I have to do at home because I am somewhere else. Or I want to be able to look at just my review and nothing else such as my email. Having the expandable list definitely helps and the context when used right help and organize your tasks and your thoughts. To create a new context, go to the plus sign at the top, New Context, add a title such as TV, and assign it a status, active, on hold, or dropped. Active would be something that is pretty much immediate or always going to be available. On hold, for example, if we want to do this for TV, the TV show won't be available till next week because, well, I won't have a TV until next week. So we'll go ahead and put that on hold. You can also add a location to this so you know where you're going to watch TV at, or you can go ahead and move this and nest this underneath another context. The map is a great tool to use on the iOS to view any contexts that are nearby or to create one by dropping a pin and adding the context. Through the map, you're able to see which projects or contexts you're able to do at a certain location. Forecast allows you to quickly view upcoming tasks as well as any iCal events that may be occurring soon. At the top, you can quickly change your view options, search, or add a new action or quick entry. As you can see, tomorrow I have one task that is due to play Frisbee, but I also have an iCal event, work at 2 o'clock. But you can also see that I have a past event that was due. This is really great because Forecast shows you any events that you are due on, any things that are coming up, or things in the past that you have not completed. Now we're going to go check out the flagged items. So now go to Menu, Flagged, and your flagged items can be reviewed here. These are often items that require special attention and need to be dealt with quickly. This can also be anything you wish. Just flag the task and it'll show up here. Since life is constantly changing, review allows you to keep watch of your tasks and allows you to have a better grasp of your priorities. You can check in with your individual tasks and assign them an action, dropped, completed, on hold, or active. Once you are done with reviewing the task, press Marked Reviewed to show your next reviewable task. This is great for those who are on a dynamic schedule and need the ability to review their tasks and make changes as needed. OmniFocus has a really great feature called Send to OmniFocus. It's for the iPad, iPhone, and also the MacBook. All you need to do is go to your OmniFocus menu, go to Settings, and under Browser Integration, just press the Install for Safari Bookmarklet. This will include any step-by-step -step instructions it has for you, and it's actually really easy and really fast to do. So I've already installed it, so let's go to our web page. I want to check out the new MacBook Pro with Retina Display, but I don't have enough time right now because I'm at work. So I want to go ahead and check this out tonight. So go to your bookmarks, send to OmniFocus, and OmniFocus opens up with a new task. 
has a title, you can add a context, project, flag it, like any other task you could add in OmniFocus. But what's really great is that sent to OmniFocus under the notes section includes the link to the website. So you could always click on that and go back to where you want to see. So you could also add attachments, any dates, and pretty much anything you could generally add to a task. This is a really great way to integrate OmniFocus in your web browsing experience. OmniFocus also works with Siri. All you need to do is create a task. Remind me at 4 p.m. to send flowers. Here's your reminder for today at 4 p.m. It says, send flowers. Shall I create it? Yes. Okay, I'll remind you. Now all you need to do is go to your OmniFocus, and you'll see that once it refreshes, your forecast will include the task that you just made. And here we go. Send flowers today. You can go ahead and edit it if you want to and already has a due at today at 4 p.m. so OmniFocus will alert you through notifications and you can add any attachments, flag it, whatever you need to do. This is a really great way to have a hands-free ability to create any type of task in OmniFocus through your iPhone with Siri.